French photographer living in Paris and welcome to episode number 5 of my tips on Lightroom Photoshop and photography. Last week we did an HDR image taking these three exposures. This was the normal exposure, underexposure and overexposure and the result was this photo. We did it using Photomatics and I showed you my workflow of what I do in Lightroom before going to Photomatics and after going to Photomatics. This week we're going to do the same thing but using Photoshop CS6 HDR engine. We're going to take this three exposure. This is the normal exposure. That's the underexposure. That's the overexposure. And the final result we are going to get is this one. Now I will show you my whole workflow of what I do also in Lightroom before going into Photoshop CS6 and what I do in Photoshop CS6 and what I do after. So one thing you should know is that the raw files are available for download in the description of that YouTube video or in the description of my Google Plus where I release this tutorial, this podcast. So, I said let's get started and let me show you how I do this. Alright guys, so here I am in Lightroom 4 and we are going to do an uh, HDR which is a very like painterly type of look. I will make the raw file available to you on my YouTube description and also on Google Plus so you can try this at home. The whole idea was to this time not use Photomatics but Photoshop CS5 and instead of going for a natural look like we did last week um, we're gonna go for a more painterly illustrative type of look. So before I do the raw processing in Photoshop CS6 which is what I'm using but you can also do it with Photoshop CS5 I like to do a little tweeting in Lightroom that's my workflow. So what I do is I take my first photo, so you see I have three photos, the normal exposure, the underexposure, and the overexposure. This is a kitchen from the 1950 that I took in a castle a while back ago and I thought it was a, a good candidate to make this panterly type of look. So the only thing I'm going to do uh, before going into the edgier process, uh, as these are raw files, I'm going to warm up a bit the picture by moving my temp temperature a bit to the right, very slightly, and my tint a bit to magenta just to make it a bit warmer. Then I'm going to add a bit of clarity uh, within the raw file so that it's because I'm going for this illustrative look so I'm embedding that clarity to start with. And um, I'm also going to do a slightly bit of noise reduction because I know that the HDR process is very noisy. However, Photoshop CS5 and CS6 and that's one of the big advantages that it doesn't uh, create much noise like Photomatic, so I only do like a little, you know, plus 10 noise reduction. Okay, so that's all I did. I did noise reduction, I changed the temperature, and that's it. Then I'm going to select all three photos, click on Sync, make sure that everything is checked, and I'm going to synchronize. So it's going to synchronize the temperature and the noise reduction on all three photos. Then I'm going to right-click, Edit, Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. That's going to launch Photoshop and bring me to this HDR engine within Photoshop. So it's going to take a while. I'm going to put on pause until we are there. Here we are in the new engine of Photoshop CS6 HDR. It took me a while to really understand what these settings actually do because I think they are a lot less friendly than you have in Photomatics. At least for me, it was a much harder process to understand. But this is my workflow. Here you have some presets custom presets and uh, one of them that I use a lot is the photorealistic. The whole idea of photorealistic is that it's supposed to give you a photorealistic rendering of the photo. So okay that's kind of nice but it's kind of boring and the key point is to understand the relation between the radius, the strengths and the details. That's really in the gamma. I would say these four settings are really what makes the HDR. Now, my formula on doing SGR is actually to bring the strengths pretty much down, like around 0 0.28 or 0.23, the radius a little higher, around like 88 pixel or something like this, and then to boost the details way up. Uh, something like, uh, especially if I go for this you know, illustrative type of look, something, let's make it around 260. Then uh, there is a new option in Photoshop CS6 that you don't have in CS5. I mean, I could, you know, just continue like this, but I, like, I love this new option. It's called the Edge Smoothness. And if you click on it, it's just going to make the image a bit more smooth 
and uh, it's going to basically take out some hollows that you can have in, in the photo. Then, so that's what I do. I always put my radius around, you know, 90 to 100 pixels, the strength very low, so radius bigger than strength. I boost up the details and then I play on the gamma. More you go to the right on the gamma, more it's going to give you an illustrative type of look, like a drawing type of things. So this is what I go for in this photo. So I'm going to keep this. Maybe I'm going to boost up a bit the strands uh, and boost up a bit the, the radius. If I boost up the radius, it's going to be a bit more natural, uh, something like this. And maybe let's go a bit more on the details. Uh, yeah, not so much. OK, let's keep it to 250 percent. OK, now that's kind of nice. It has this sort of painterly type of look, you know, but uh, it's lacking of contrast. So I do, first I'm gonna bring Vibrance up because Vibrance, uh, HDR, you know, painterly type HDR photos are pretty saturated usually. So I'm gonna put some Vibrance in it. And I'm gonna go to Curve and just make an S curve uh, to, bring on, to bring down some contrast on this photo. So I'm gonna click here, make the highlights go uh, higher. You know, the whole concept of contrast is you make the photo brighter in the bright part and make the photo darker in the dark parts. So this is what I do. It's an S curve. And uh, so now I have contrast everywhere. I can go back to advance. Um, you can, I usually don't touch so much the shadows and highlight, but you can check what happens if you go left on the shadows. It doesn't change much on the photo. It's supposed to open up the shadows if I go right, uh, which is fine. But most of that, the rest of the tweaking I'm going to do in, in Lightroom. But I'm kind of happy of how the tone mapping has been done. Tone mapping is this act of, you know, moving the sliders to get a look that you want. So let me repeat the basic formula. The radius, you know, something anywhere between 80 and 150, actually bigger than strength. Strength, you have to go, you have to watch it because you see I'm at 0 0.37. Imagine I would go to like 1.21. Look at how ugly it would get. So strengths, you really have to uh, be gentle in it, especially if your details are high, because these three sliders are completely in relation. So, okay, I'm going for, you know, a, a low value, value on strengths, radius 150, details to the max, and my gamma, which is here in the middle, I put it a bit to the right at 0 0.75. Then I just did a curve and added a bit of vibrance. That's it. I'm going to click on OK. Photoshop is going to tone map is going to merge all three exposure into one big file which i'm going to reimport into lightroom and then i'm going to finish my retouching in lightroom so it's creating the hdr file then it's going to open it up in photoshop cs6 which i could continue there but i kind of like the settings that we have uh, in um, in lightroom i think it goes much faster uh, to take it from there so then all i'm going to do is close the file uh, file close which is here and uh, click on save and it's going to re-import it into uh, Lightroom so let's go into Lightroom the photo should be there there it is and now we can tweak a little bit more so I don't do much in Lightroom but I want to make this pop even more for that uh, I'm going to open up a bit the shadows uh, which is going to take out the contrast, but then I'm going to bring back contrast. And as I bring back contrast, it makes the photo pop and more saturated and darker too. So as I move the contrast lighter, I also open up the shadows in the same time. Otherwise, the photo gets too dark. Now, the photo is kind of nice, but it's too saturated. So I'm just going to bring the vibrance a bit on the left to make it less saturated. And then I'm going to bright up even more the whole photo. See, open, opening up the shadows did, you know, um, lighten up a bit the photo, but I want to lighten it up a little bit more, very slightly more. Why? Because the next thing I'm going to do to create even more local contrast is now that I have brightened up the photo, I'm going to go down to the vignetting, which is here, the post crop vignetting, and I'm going to add some vignetting. And the fact that I brightened up the photo and added some vignetting, it gives me, you know, more... Um, a better lighting of the photo last but not least uh, I'm just but that's what I do every time I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, dodge and burn on this photo I'm gonna brighten up uh, some uh, some parts of the photo using the, the brush tool making sure I'm on exposure then I'm just gonna brighten up the exposure and I'm just gonna you know 
add, for example, a ray here, you know, to make this a, a bit, uh, you know, lighter. I'm going to click on new. Every time I uh, do a ray, I click a new brush because I want to be able to tweak each ray individually if needed. I'm just going to add some ray here and that's way too strong. So I'm going to back it down. I just want to add some, you know, uh, some kind of, you know, different lighting. I don't, I hate when walls are evenly lighted. You know, I like when it gives just more texture to do that. Okay. I click on new, maybe do something here. Uh, something here okay that's cool it's a bit strong so I, I, I back it down I mean it's, it's subtle but I kind of like it I click on new uh, maybe make this a little bit brighter that's a bit too strong so I'm gonna back it down also okay I mean yeah that's about it yeah maybe the one last one here something here and back it down a little bit and another one here and back it down a little bit so I've added some more lights, you know, check it out before the lights, after the lights. It's kind of subtle, but it makes the whole room, I think, more interesting. And that's basically it. Oh, sometimes what I do, it works. I can add some clarity, even more clarity. That kind of worked well, you know, if you go for this painterly, like graphical type of look. And uh, then I'm going to go to, um, let's check if there's any noise. Uh, there's not much noise in that photo, but I'm going to boost the sharpening around 60. Make it very sharp. Okay, so there you have it, guys. That's my workflow using the Photoshop engine of HDR. Hope you guys liked it. Okay, guys, as usual, a little advertisement for my training courses that you can find on my website, which is photosearch.com. If you click on the App Store link, um, you know, this is how I, I finance the time to be able to do this free podcast and all these free tutorials. They're actually pretty cheap courses. And I realized the other day that I had not uh, written the uh, price on the courses because they only cost $6 each, the prices on each courses and actually created packages you can buy, for example, for $15, you can buy all the Lightroom courses, which is, you know, the travel photography Lightroom for course, the Lightroom for retouching, the Lightroom for quick start. That's about five hours of course for $15, or you can also buy for $20 on my Photoshop training, which is Photoshop CS6 Quick Start, which really gets you into Photoshop CS6, Photoshop CS6 Compositing for doing compositing, Photoshop CS5 Landscape, but it's it's a whole project on retouching landscape and my HDR tutorials with Photomatics and Photoshops. All this for just $20, that's about eight hours, of course, for, for $20. And last but not least, you can buy for $34 all my courses, which is these two packages together. So they are not very expensive. And the reason why it's so cheap is because I also sell them on the App Store. And then on the App Store, you know, usual price of apps is around four or five dollars. If you go above that, you don't really sell. So, uh, you know, I wanted to match the price that I was selling on the App Store. And uh, you have two choices. You can either buy them on the App Store or you can just download the training and you will get all the raw files and all the videos straight to your Mac or PC if you click that download training link. Or if you prefer to watch them on the iPhone or iPad, I have universal apps that would work on both devices. You can just click on here. They're the same prices. And last but not least, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel so that you can weekly get this free podcast. Voila, let's get back to the studio. Okay guys, so I hope you liked the tutorial. One thing I did not mention before is that one of the reasons I use Photoshop C6 engine, HDR engine, is because it's, uh, it handles noise much better than Photomatics. But the way I actually work is that I uh, usually when I have three photos that I really like, I try them in Photomatics, I try them in CS6, and I see what I like the most. This is you know the criteria I use to decide which engine I'm going to use. Anyways, so to get on with this podcast, this week's inspiration is a friend of mine and somebody who is a lovely guy named Matt Kruskowski. I guess most of you know him. Uh, funny story of how I met Matt. He was a um, about uh, two years ago, he was in London and he was going to Paris. I've never met him before. And he posted on his blog that he was going to Paris and he was looking uh, for a photographer that could uh, show him some places. Of course, I was a candidate having a lot of photos on Paris. So I brought him a little email saying, yeah, here are my photos. You know, uh, you know I would love to help you. And so he sent me an email saying me, uh, stating, meet me at five in the morning in front of Notre Dame in the middle of the night. I never had met the guy before. It was a pretty funny story because meeting someone for the first time in the middle of the night 
can be a bit odd. But anyway, so I was there at 5 in the morning, there was no one. Usually, the front of Notre Dame is loaded with people, there was no one, it was just me and Matt. And then we spent three days having a blast, taking photos together in Paris, I sh kind of shot him in around. Uh, this is some of the photos we took together, that's what we took in the morning, that morning in front of Notre Dame. We went a bit further down to the Pont Neuf Bridge, that we got the sun rise uh, there and um, actually the last day we went to the Eiffel Tower and uh, this is a panoramic I did where, I, where Matt is taking the Eiffel Tower. Anyways, you can see his work on his uh, blog which is mattkett.com, it's called the Ski Report which you can find here and he also has a blog which is very famous, it's called Lightroom Killer Tips which you can see here. It's a blog I've been going to for years where he gives great presets on Lightrooms uh, there's a lot of videos, he has a podcast which I am subscribed to and I invite you to do the same thing. He also has incredible training on Lightroom that you can find, very in-depth training on calvitraining.com. And uh, he's a great guy and a great photographer and he does great HDR too. So thank you for watching this episode. Next week we are going to do some HDR just using Lightroom 4.1, new option on doing HDR. It's going to be awesome, I hope at least. See you next week.